Since 2016, TENT has been an international resource, connecting refugees with businesses hiring them. The State Department has been proud to partner with TENT in this vital work. Last December, we signed a Memorandum of Understanding to expand our collaboration. Together, we're working with other governments and international organizations to reduce barriers to employment for refugees and to strengthen the global coalition to support them. We're also starting new efforts to help companies hire refugees. For example, over the past six months, we've shared information and tools with businesses across Europe and beyond. We've hosted events with senior leaders from over 100 major companies at U.S. embassies in Germany, Spain, France, Sweden, and Mexico. And soon, we'll do the same in the United Kingdom and Kenya. Our partnership with TENT is one of the many ways the United States is supporting refugees across the globe. We're the world's biggest donor to humanitarian causes, including contributing more than $2 billion to UNHCR last year. In January, the U.S. launched the Welcome Corps, a new private sponsorship program that enables everyday American citizens to help refugees get settled around the country. Already, Americans in 37 states are establishing groups to welcome refugees. And together, we're working toward the broader goal that President Biden set to resettle 125,000 refugees in the United States this year. To rise to this historic moment, we all need to do more. Governments, civil society, international organizations, and the private sector. At this summit, more than 40 companies will make new commitments to hire or train thousands of refugees around Europe over the next three years. If you own a company or if you simply have room for talent on your team, I hope you'll make a pledge. You have so much to offer, but also so much to gain. To businesses, refugees bring exceptional talents and innovative ideas. As Tent found in its studies, German companies that hired refugees saw rates of employee retention and productivity increase across their organizations. As for refugees, finding a job can be life-changing. That was the case for Karam. He fled persecution in Darfur, Sudan, eventually arriving in France. He got hired at the L'Oreal Foundation to help run a job training program for women from vulnerable communities in more than 25 countries. For Karam, the work let him give back and help others. And in his words, the job brought me to life. I know that countless stories like Karam's will come from the pledges you make today going forward. Thank you. Well, sorry, I've got to laugh. It's one thing about the left is they always try to tug at the heartstrings. People's homes are getting burnt down in Germany. It's yeah, I mean, I can't, don't even get me started. Welcome to uh, Investigate Everything. Sorry about this snafu on Rumble. Um, Daily Cloud kind of changed my configuration a little bit, so I had to find a bunch of things. So I do apologize. I will play the video that I played. I will play it at the end of the broadcast uh, so you can see it. And I will also include it. It will be included on the recording. But really what that the video showed is... Kamala Harris making excuses for not going to the border. Um, and she kept using the word root causes. So I'm checking in with my chat right now. I just want to make sure you guys in Rumble can see me. And for everyone else, um, make sure you get over to Rumble. Okay, I will put the, um, I'll put that up on the uh, screen so you know where to go because I'm not going to live cast um, the whole time on X. I just want to kind of draw you in and bring you over but the live chat is over at rumble okay so that's where you need to be um and i'm also gonna try to put the live chat up on the um up on the the screen right now i've never done that so let's see if that works yeah there we go okay cool all right so there's the live chat right now um okay so what's going on with this all right, and I'm going to take you guys down, but just so you know, I got you there. Okay, so what is the point of this episode? Okay, the point of this episode is is pretty simple. Let me adjust my camera. Sorry, it's like amateur hour in O'Shea's house here. Um, all right, uh, Steve Allen over there on Rumble, give me a thumbs up if you would, if everything seems like it's working, broadcasting, it seems like it is. Um, but just make sure if, if you could give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. Okay, so... 
what's going on with Kamala Harris now that I'm getting focused? I did have a power outage today. If uh, I think my cousin, good, I can see you and hear you. Thank you, Sherry Bosch. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I did have power, not an outage. We blew out something, and I've got a bunch of extension cords running into the studio here to keep things rolling. So, Kamala Harris, it is my belief, okay, that Kamala Harris was given this position a border czar, which now they're trying to, the media is trying to cover up that she was ever the border czar. Of course she was, and she was called the border czar. It doesn't matter what she was called. That was her job, was to secure the border. But did she ever secure the border? Did she ever even try to secure the border? No. She just recently went down to the border because uh, she's, you know, the presumed um, candidate. So ask yourself this. Why would someone like Kamala Harris, first of all, even be given the job of border czar if anyone was serious about securing the border? Well, of course not. Why didn't they at least try to spin a little that she was not going to the border, but instead flying to Guatemala and Mexico and meeting with business leaders? Why didn't they try to spin that? Well, they didn't spin that because they wanted the rest of the world, the other countries who they're doing business with the Biden administration, to see that Kamala's on her way. What's she on her way to do? Well, let me tell you. She was on her way to ins- to assure all of these international partners that, yes, we are going to break down the borders. We are going to have a stream of cheap labor worldwide, and we're all going to make a lot of money. That is my informed opinion, not daily clouts, but that is my informed opinion. And let me start getting to the receipts. Okay, and I am going to put the chat right up here. So we got... Um, she never went to our borders. She's a laughing. Yep, let me go and throw that up. I totally agree with you. Um, there we go. Cool. I can see your chat now. Okay, she's a laughing joke. She is a laughing joke, but don't underestimate her because she's got a machine behind her. Don't like immigration? Well, someone's got to work. Ugh. Um, well, we're going to get to that. It's interesting you say that. There's a lot of people that want to work, um, not Lowe's too, um, that, uh, and good to see you again. There's a lot of people that want to work that are losing their jobs. Tyson's Chicken, uh, lots in the hospitality industry, actually losing their jobs because of the abuses of, of this labor market by these employers. Okay, so let me, let me draw it back in. My point is the whole point of Harris being in there was to not only ensure and and press the flesh with the business partners, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that whole partnership in a second, but also she becomes the face of the border. She becomes the face of why you, the illegal alien, got to come to this country, right? Who are you gonna vote for? She's the face. She is the they were passing out her book on the border, down at the Darien Gap, everything. This thing was planned a long time ago. They always plan on putting Kamala in there. I think the only thing that wasn't planned was no one planned on Joe Biden um, endorsing her right as he left because that definitely wasn't part of the plan. I'm going to put up a good New York Post article about that well-sourced. Um, oh, apparently Obama, who is still really running this country, was pissed. But we'll get to that in a second, according to this article. Um, okay, so then um, she's Antifa queen. Um, I don't know if she's an Antifa queen, more like Antifa's Black Widow queen protector, Stephen Allen. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely, I, look, I think Antifa is like the, you know, they're kind of like the brown shirts or the black shirts. I call them the green shirts. Um, you know, they go in every time there's an unpopular protest. Remember, Antifa was not only burning things down for BLM, and starting all sorts of nonsense. They were also attacking anti-vaccine peaceful protests. So obviously it's it's their thuggery of the Democratic Party. But I don't want to get off track because I, that's easily done with me. All right, let's get back to Kamala Harris. Okay, so what do I know about Kamala Harris? Well, I know a few things. I've been doing a little research and let's get right to it. I'm actually going to share 
my I, I've been organizing on one note. I don't promote them. I don't have any, you know, stake in the game there. But here's what I came to is that so Kamala is the face of it. So already you have all these illegal voters coming in. Most of them can't speak English. They're going to see that familiar face. They got her book. She wrote a children's book or something that was being put in all their backpacks. Okay. J.J. Carroll and I we were just going into the whole debacle there. And I, th I think what happened was, let's start with the assassination attempt. Who could have guessed the guy can dodge bullets? Donald Trump. Amen to that. Um, and by the way, just so you know, I am, I'm not, I try not to be biased. I am, I am a MAGA guy and I am voting for Donald Trump. And I don't care if anyone wants to talk about, well, he did this and he did, I don't care. That's, that's what our country needs. But I'm not here to debate about that. Um, vote for who you want. That's what I'm voting for. And I don't reflect Daily Clout's opinions. That's my opinions. Anyways, so, so we're clear on that. But I do try to stay objective. I'm trained to be objective. All right, so I'm looking at Kamala Harris. I'm following the money. Following the money. So it got me thinking, who benefits the most from this open border? Which industry benefits the most? Agriculture, of course. Transportation, of course. Hospitality really benefits. So let's get into it. Let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. Give us a second, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. Aha. Okay, so, and again, this is mine here. I will put myself off to the side. There we go. Okay. So this is um, my little investigation case book, you could call it, I guess. Um, so here's the timeline I started putting together. Okay, so January 20th, 2021. That's pretty early. The hotel industry congratulates President Biden and Vice President Harris. So the hotel industry... And that's from Lodging Magazine. Was very excited that they got in. That's weird. Um, Vice President. Then we we go down further. May twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. And there's a lot of gaps here. Again, I'm including you in this as I'm I'm doing it. That's the whole point. So yes, feel free to send me more stuff. I will add it to the timeline. Um, this is the whole point of the show is to investigate this with you. Okay. Harris uh, launches a call to action to the private sector to deepen investment in the Northern Triangle. Let's get into that. So that will take you to none other than the White House's homepage. And I gotta share that tab now. Um, okay, so that gets you to the White House. And uh, nah, hold on. Um, let me just get there. Okay, stop that screen. Sorry, guys, it's it's a little cumbersome here. I'm going to showcase. Now let me share that one. Okay. All right, so she launches this thing in May 2021. All right, now, this is what I want you to pay attention to. This is May 27th, 2021. You can find this on whitehouse.gov. Don't go to whitehouse.com, trust me. You know, people have been around the block a few times, don't why. Um, Vice President Harris launches a call to action to deepen... Uh, to the private sector to deepen investment in the Northern Triangle. 12 companies and organizations announced commitments to support uh, economic development in the Northern Triangle as part of a call to action. Okay, so we're talking about El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. Okay, so she goes through this and announced a call to action for businesses, social enterprises, keep an eye on those words, um, to make new significant commitments to help send a signal of hope to her bank account, to the people of the region and sustainably address the root causes of migration by promoting economic opportunity. Okay. I mean, look, you guys don't need to be, have my background know what this sounds like. And then it gets better. Look, who <laughs> in the call of action, 12 companies and organizations announced commitments to support the inclusive economic development of the northern triangle oh my god i'm gonna cry they care so much and they're sustainable as well um oh my gosh it's the chan public health school mastercard microsoft nespresso um i can never know pro majeure 
the Tent Partnership for Refugees, and of course, the World Economic Forum. Now, pay attention to the Tent Partnership. We're going to dive into them. That is a bad, evil cabal right there. That is all of them. That is behind so much of the illegal immigration. Our comprehensive strategy to address the root cause. Okay, we don't care. Supporting the long-term development of the region in the Western Hemisphere more broadly will require more than just resources from the U.S. government, meaning your taxpayer dollars. Um, for this reason, Vice President Harris is calling on the private sector to draw from its unique resources, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. U.S. government long-term commitments and call to action focus areas. You ready for this? This is where it goes pretty much all the way Marxist. This call to action is one component under the U.S. government's comprehensive long-term strategy to address barriers to investment and to promote economic opportunity in the Northern Triangle. Just as government alone, I feel like we read that already, um, to achieve private sector commitments will be facilitated and supported by strong U.S. government initiatives to address long-standing impediments to investment-led growth. Investment-led growth. What is a long-standing impediment to investment-led growth? Oh, I know, wages. It's one of the biggest overheads for any business. So let's get that down. Okay, and under our broader strategy, near-term private sector commitments will be mutually reinforced by sustained U.S. government efforts to foster a business-enabling environment, increased private sector investment, and sustainable economic growth opportunity. Um, as part of the larger strategy for this call to action, aims to generate new commitments from businesses and social enterprises. Reform agenda. These are the focus areas. Ready? You can love this. Reform agenda. Commitments to support greater transparency, predictability, and stability in the business enabling environment by facilitating regional government efforts to adopt international best practices in licensing, permitting, procurement, regulation, and taxation. I'm going to bring up the chat. I'm going to put it, see who wants to take a shot at that. How many Marxist things can you pick out of that one? How many little communist things can you pick out of that one? Can you guess? Let's see. Central banks don't like wage inflation. Yep. Uh, that wasn't a Freudian slip, was it? Nope. <laughs> capitalism isn't just an economic system. It's also social engineering. I'll take capitalism over communism any day of the week. Um, all due respect. Okay, so we got K in there. Usha Vance's mother. Look, she made a... And then they revealed, uh, I don't know what you're trying to tell me here. We'll come back to you. Anyways, all right, so what is in here? Okay, look, let's, let's go back to it. We have, for, for this first one, okay. <laughs> International best practices and licensing. Okay, so in the United States, as I'm sure a lot of you know, you are licensed by the state, not licensed by even the federal government, depending on your business. Your business licenses come from the state, okay, whatever office, usually the Small Business Administration or the SEC, SCC, depending on your state, they're all different. Just like being a private investigator is a state license, okay, states have authority over that. This goes beyond that. Like, she is literally saying, well, this presidential memo is saying, you know, we're going <laughs> to, we're shooting for international best practices and licensing. Okay, that is called harmonization of regulations and on an international scale and in unrestricted invasion, uh, unrestricted warfare, um, that's called regulatory warfare. You harmonize all of the regulations. To harmonize them, you need a central authority to enforce violations of licenses, to issue them. It basically takes the rights away from even the countries, and it gives it over to an international body. And who do we know has control over a lot of these international bodies? Um, yeah, the Chinese. You know, we can argue that to the cows come home. It doesn't really matter if it's the Chinese or not. It matters that it's not someone you elected. Um, let me see here. I just like the interaction. And I missed you guys, by the way. Um, okay, so 
How much goes into Kamala's coffers? Well, we're not there yet. This is an ongoing investigation. Difference is I'm sharing my results with you. We just started this the other day. But what, and by the way, um, TPH14, um, TPH14, thanks for joining. We started this because JJ and I are like, God, what, what do we talk about on Unrestricted Invasion, my other show with JJ Carroll? And I was like, I don't know. And then first, I'd been looking at this tent partnership. We'll get to that. And I was like, God, yeah, I've never searched Kamala Harris against this. I never even thought about it. I just had written her off. And lo and behold, wow. Um, all right, now, not Lowe's. Of course you would. It doesn't seem like you work. Oh, come on, not Lowe's. I work all day long. You're crazy, man. Um, but, you know, you're part of the audience, so I love you. The Democrat, okay. <laughs> the Democrats of 2024 are more bloody economically right-wing than Reagan. Yeah, not really capitalist, more like, I don't even know what you call it, like authoritarian prophetess, who knows? Um, but I agree with you. And interesting choice of words, bloody. You're, they're bloodier too. Okay, TPH, Stephen, who was pushing wage increases. Dems, Stephen, who was pushing wage increases. Dems, well, yes and no. They were they were pushing them, but what else were they pushing? They were the ones that pushed for all of this unemployment. Okay, so unemployment got extended so much you're going to ki you kill the work ethic during the COVID pandemic, then all of a sudden you flood the replacements right through the border, who who, as I'll show you, get paid much less. You ain't getting your job back. Okay, so you stay on the dole as long as you can until the dole runs out, and guess what? You're gonna take any job they give you. And that's the plan. They also kept you on the couch by keeping marijuana companies and alcohol or liquor stores open. Isn't that a weird choice that they kept those open? Um, again, my opinion, but good point, TPH. I'm just going to call you TPH from now on. Um, oh, I love this guy's name. Revman Solution. It's been a while, man. Good to see you. Sounds like a color revolution coming to those countries. Could be. You never know. Let's keep an eye on it. Um, okay, I'm going to... Proof. What did Reagan do with illegal immigrants again? Um, oh, right. He gave them all amnesty. Yeah, 1986, I believe. Um, again, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole yet. It's important. I'll mark it, but uh, not yet. Not yet. I want to stay on Kamala for now. Um, Stephen Allen. I work for two federal banks. The Dems push up wages to cause unemployment. Um, push up wages to cause unemployment. You'll have to explain that one to me, Stephen Allen. I don't get it, but I'd like to hear it. Um, and feel free to call in. I'll, I'll put you on speaker. Um, it's neoliberalism. They are both neoliberals. Yeah, whatever you want to call them. I call them neo-Marxists. I call them uh, globalist authoritarians. The point is what they want is they want this entire world to be like a big corporation. I always picture it like kind of like the Hunger Games, like there's going to be a central probably China, and then we all produce things. Like we'll produce food and weapons. Okay, other places will produce, I don't know, sheep, ice, whatever. Um, okay, this is a act blue fraud that just came out is massive fraud. More power. Let me quickly give, that is a good point. Let me give you um, guys all something to think about. Okay, so my friend Jim Hoft at the Gateway Pundit, he, he's been reporting on the fraud of act blue for a long time. Okay, a long time. Now let's let's think about what for those that don't know what Act Blue is, it's a payment processor for left wing causes, you name it. First of all, Act Blue, when you donate to Act Blue, you give your money to Act Blue, go to any candidate website, you'll see Act Blue. That's who's taking the money. The if you read the fine print on Act Blue, it says they don't have to use that money for the candidate you were donating it to. They can use that money for any cause they deem appropriate. So the minute if anyone's dumb enough to give their money to Act Blue, the minute your money goes there, boom, they can use it for anything, and they sure did. But here's another thing to think about back on the border. So they're giving out these cards, these cash cards, right? 2,500, 5,000. You get like two if you have a kid, whether it's your kid or not. They don't know because they stopped DNA testing. Um, do you guys really think they're giving them these cards? Do you really think all those cards are going to the immigrants, the illegal aliens? No. 
my friend Hernando Arce, he's down there uh, in San Antonio all the time, and he's just been haunting um, one of these uh, immigrant centers. And they, Catholic Charities is actually s- taking the tickets that are supposed to go to the illegals that came from HHS mainly, and refunding them back to get uh, compensated for those tickets. And then these illegals are sitting there for two weeks trying to beg for money to get a plane ticket. It's it's pretty dirty. And Hernando Arce, uh, uh, we've had him on the show before. I'll put his Twitter up. Um, he, he talks to them, and he had a guy who was talking to him in his truck, and they said the illegals are like they're more scared of Catholic Charities people than they are of the government, of, of the Border Patrol. Scary. Okay, so um, Toasty, he does. <laughs> You guys are frosty. I like it. I like it. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good crowd tonight. Okay. So, um, anyways, you got these cards now. These cards. Okay. I hope you guys are keeping notes. These cards are provided by Sodexo. Okay. Sodexo is a big logistics company. Sodexo also is one of the main logistics companies for the U.S. military. Always has been. Always will. Sodexo's also got all the contracts for lots of food for hospitals, schools, that sort of thing. Um, anyways, so Sodexo issues those cards, those cash cards. So think about this. Jim Hoft, what he revealed is an, uh, something called smurfing. Okay. Now what is smurfing? Smurfing in election fraud. That is when you take, you know, some grandma and she, you know, she maybe donates tack blue once or twice. And then you, um, using her name and, and information uh, that you got through ActBlue. Then you make sure, whether with her money or just other money you put on top of her, she's donating constantly. She's donating constantly. Um, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. Now, she's only donated like 20 bucks, but in her name, multiple 5,000, $2,500, whatever, multiple donations are being made in her name. That is called smurfing. The name comes from the fact that a lot of the, uh, I guess, intentional counterfeiters used to they used to identify them by their blue hair like the cartels would paint their hair blue for some reason that's where it came from something like that anyways so that's what smurfing is so now think about it you have millions and millions according because there's millions of illegals you have millions of these cash cards being supposedly given to these illegals now come on they don't sign for them they don't need an id for these cash cards do you think all those cash cards go to illegals? Hell no. They're going right back into the pockets of those charities, but a lot of those cards are being used to fund Act Blue, which then funds the Blobs candidate. Go to Act Blue, go to Open Secrets, as, as you know, I'd go to FEC, uh, Federal Election Committee. Start looking for amounts, multiple amounts of donations to people like Kamala Harris that are the same amount as those cards, 1,200, 2,500, 5,000, look for them. What you're gonna find is crazy. Let me pull it up. You're gonna find something that um, makes no sense. You're gonna find a lot of unemployed people making $5,000 donations a month. Okay, that is smurfing. You're gonna see so many of these if you haven't already. But that's what I think, is I think those cards, which are taxpayer-funded through HHS down to the NGOs who then supposedly give them to the illegals, then all of a sudden, Kamala breaks records on donations. All right. But back to this. We'll get to that in a second. Um, God, it's really hard to stay on track when there's so much news. Okay, so back to this. Digital and financial inclusion, commitments to expand affordable... Uh, internet access and participation in the digital economy. Boom, there it is. Where's my uh, centralized bank digital currency people? Yep. Okay. Uh, too funny. Okay, I got to put you guys on the screen. Definitely. I got to figure out how to do that. Anyways. Okay, digital financial inclusion, particularly um, women in indigenous owned businesses. Indigenous owned businesses, you mean like the ones illegals set up? probably, um, and ensure that the most vulnerable and the most likely to migrate have access to basic services and financial institutions. 
This is 2021, man. Food security and climate smart agriculture, of course. Commitments to combat food shortages by increasing increasing agricultural productivity and crop resilience. Hello, Monsanto. Hello, Frankenseeds. You guys know what that stuff means. Um, all right, climate adaptation and clean energy. Okay, so you, you get it. Education and workforce development. Commitments to expand job training programs, support greater access to technical and secondary education, and create higher paying formal sector jobs, especially for women in rural areas. And then public health access. Commitments to support regional governments in addressing the impacts of COVID-19 and their populations. Build robust. Okay, so you see what happened here is everything this is the whole agenda on the backs of the illegals. Um, I'll let you read through the rest of this. I'll put it in the chat. But the point is, the point I'm making is this whole thing was planned. You go into the Partnership for America and watch where this takes you. It's a nonprofit organization developed to support the vice president's call to action. The partnership aims to coordinate practical solutions to advance economic opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, Again, I don't want to read through this whole thing. I want to get to the point. Um, so let me take that one down. Okay. That's harder than it looks on TV. So now we go back to Pamela. Okay. And my... Uh, stop that one. I wish you could add multiple screens. It's kind of cumbersome. Okay. Not that one. Not that one. We're going to do the window. Okay, here we go. So back to the timeline. And again, I just started this the other night. I actually wasn't investigating Kamala at all. I just, you know, shows you, shows you everyone's human. Like, I just thought she was too stupid. Um, so then in June 2021, now she's saying, don't, don't come. Remember this big speech here? You probably do. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. I don't need to play it but I'll, I'll post this and i'm going to make actually i'm going to make this a public document so you guys will be able to share um certain people will be able to comment i can't open up the comments to everyone because there's a lot of trolls out there harris speaks about why she hasn't traveled the southern border and then of course she's on the genius um coalition of the view um okay so now july 2021 here we go again this is skift this is a major news source for the hospitality industry trump versus harris and what would each administration, we're, we're all the way to present time now, mean for the travel industry? So you see, it's all about not just the travel industry, but I'll say this. The travel industry makes a ton of money off this, okay? Makes a ton of money off this. So let's um, let's get right into tent partnership. So what is the tent partnership? Okay, that's got the, oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. So Temp Partnership, as you recall, that was, Blinken was talking about the Temp Partnership. The Temp Partnership is something we've been following for a while. Now, the members of the Temp Partnership, wait till you see this, are everyone you hate. But not only that, it's everyone, um, like Choice Hotels, where they're keeping all the uh, illegal aliens. Um, it's also things like the American Hotel and Hospitality um, uh, um, organization, another nonprofit that has been pushing for increased migration, pushing for expanded visas because they want the cheap labor. Okay, so there's that. Now, let me get off this one here. Okay, there we go. Now, what I want to talk about is one more thing. Okay, well, we got some time. So, all right, back to the point. Kamala Harris. Okay, Kamala Harris is going down, pressing flesh with all these business leaders. She even has it in the White House statement. It's about business. Since she went down to Guatemala and the you know, the Triangle countries, it's only gotten worse. It's only gotten worse because that's what they want. Okay, and even the IMF was bragging, bragging about how wages have come down since the flow of illegals, not only in this country, but all over the world. Um, I guess global minimum wage came down and they were happy as clams. Um, yeah, so here it is. Yeah. 
Okay, so sharing that screen. I, I gotta stop giving you guys my... Okay, nope. Sorry, guys. I'll get there. Here we go. Okay. I'm getting the hang of it now. All right, so here we go. This is the International Monetary Fund. They are tracking, that. they always do, but they're tracking the heck out of the wage. Um, the, the minimum wage for the entire world has actually gone down as a result of illegal immigration. This is the wrong article. I don't have the right one up. I will put it in the share. But they were cheering it on. I recommend everyone, you know, you don't have to buy it, but certainly um, you want to uh, you want to read it, okay? You want to read it because Financial Times, that's where you could kind of, that's like the globalist, like kind of like Bible. Anyways, they're happy as clams that global minimum wages come down. And what really got me is like when you think about international business, what are some of the things you have to think about? Okay, so I, I've been a consultant for like SWOT analysis of strengths, weaknesses, obstacle opportunities, and threats um, for businesses. So I would identify, okay, this country's good, this country's bad. Okay, that's big money in D.C. That is big money in D.C. You got the Chertoff Group, Michael Chertoff's outfit. You've got Ridge Global, Tom Ridge, the first DHS director's firm. Those people make big money. They normally make that money after they leave government service. Now, I'm wondering, and maybe you guys can help me, because, again, I don't have time to get all these investigations done for each episode, but here's kind of like the key intelligence questions, or KIQ. In competitive intelligence speak, that's how you form your investigations. You form questions, just like an outline. So my key intelligence topic would be Kamala Harris and the globalist transportation, agriculture, and hospitality industry. The key intelligence question one is which countries benefited the most? Key intelligence question two, how much money did Kamala or entities associated with her make? And key intelligence three is there, key intelligence question three, is there anyone close to Kamala who might be able to facilitate to some of these countries and the businesses within them um, easier paths to do business. Now think about that. Can you imagine being a consultant in international business where you help companies get around government regulations, you help companies set up in a new country, you help companies go kind of like international? Wouldn't it be great if you had, I don't know, your hand up the back of a vice president of the most powerful country in the world and pretty much dictate to her what international relations will be, international policy. And then that'd be great, right? That that'd be really awesome. Well, let's let's check out one of my new favorite guys that I just discovered the other day. I'm sure a lot of you knew him before. Um but check this out. So yeah, so to get around government regulation. So you're you're getting into you want to get into a country. You want to set up your hotel industry. And you're like, hmm, I can't really get around these regulations. Like, for instance, in Brazil, they have requirements for companies where so much of your corporation has to be Brazilians. Okay, I'm, I could get down with that. That's great. Um, but what if you could get America to lean on those governments to change the regulations to accommodate your clients? Okay, I, I won't postulate anymore on that. Let me show you what I found. Okay, let me get rid of that chat yeah okay back to this back to my one note okay so here we go meet hmm, phil gordon who is phil gordon well phil gordon is kamala harris's national security advisor okay he was um appointed to her in 2022 uh he just got back from Guatemala and El Salvador on November 26, 2023. Um, he was Obama's Middle East expert on foreign policy. Phil Gar Gordon has carved out an unusually influential role as national security advisor to the VP. Uh, he's also a senior uh, fellow at the Council for Foreign Relations. 
Okay. Now this is my favorite. He's also he was special assistant for Obama and the White House uh, coordinator for Middle East, North Africa, and Gulf region. But it gets even better. So um, this is from the um, U.S. Ukraine Business Council in 2009. Two key positions of interest, this is the Ukrainian Business Council talking, of interest regarding the United States and Ukraine, President Barack Obama nominates Phil Gordon as Assistant Secretary for European and Eurasian Affairs and Melanie Verveer as Ambassador-at-Large for Global Women's Issues at the U.S. Department of State. Uh, someone in the chat, feel free to look into why the women thing is so important. I mean, beyond just equality and all those things are important but these people don't do anything unless there's profit for it they don't they don't care about women's rights they care about profit so if someone in the chat wants to do that my email is brian at dailyclout.io and you can send me your leads and i will cite you i will give you credit i don't take your credit i don't care about that stuff um i just i'm really trying to get some help with these investigations that's really why i'm doing this show uh, you can send all your leads there just put hashtag um investigate everything you know or whatever your subject is so i know it's you okay so um this is where it gets great so there's there's the guy right there okay so he works or worked i can't tell if he works or worked there he worked at one of those firms i was talking about it is called albright stonebridge group asg's areas of industry expertise include agriculture consumer product and retail, energy and natural resources, financial services, health and life sciences, hospitality and tourism, industrial infrastructure, machinery, equipment, metals and mining, professional services, technology and transportation. Now, I want to point out that every single firm that does this kind of consulting lists all those industries. Okay, it doesn't mean they do them. In, but in this case here, what I found, oh, by the way, they also got a grant from the Gates Foundation. Okay, so this is the firm here. Let me call up that. I'm going to stop sharing that. And yeah, a lot of this stuff is, um, for some reason, they took it down. So I had to go into the web archives to get to it. All right, so I need one more screen. Okay, here we go. I'm going to share the screen with you here. And yeah, so this is from the archives here. Get that over there, and let me get that over there. There we go. Okay, so what do these guys do? Well, pretty much uh, that thing didn't load great, but we'll just go with it. Okay, so here's their offerings. Okay, so their offerings are on the ground support, government affairs, and advocacy. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being alumni? Now, keep in mind, he can leave that firm, right? They stop paying his wages, all that. And then he could just be a 1099, which there's no database for 1099s outside the IRS. And if you own the IRS or your boss does, they're not going to audit you anyways. Track it. So our global team serves clients ranging from the world's leading commercial and financial organizations to high growth ventures, industries, associations, philanthropic organizations, and more tracking and reporting. This is what they do. Tracking and reporting on countries and topics, opportunity and risk assessments, corporate development, international expansion, stakeholder mapping, economic, political, sectoral, um, and regulatory analysis, policy monitoring. Hmm. Kind of like when Biden told uh, them to stop investigating his son's company in Ukraine. On the ground, around the world, market entry, growth, exit, stakeholder engagement, partner identification and vetting. Partner with this guy. You'll be good. Executive positioning and reputation management. That would be, uh, you know, having control over Twitter and those kind of things. Um, corporate sustainability, social impact, public-private partnerships. Okay, so this is what the firm um, that Kamala's national security advisor, this is what they do. Okay. It's what they do. And whether he's still with them or not, DC is a small town. You, you're always exchanging contracts. You're always subcontracting out. It's a small town. I worked there for a very long time and I didn't work for that firm, but I got interviewed by several of these firms. I did do a lot of this kind of work for Deloitte. I didn't have any government contacts. I just had on the ground experience. 
But that's the name of the game. It's influence and pe- influence peddling. Normally, it happens when you leave government service. You you can't tell me that this guy is not getting nice fees to make sure certain things happen, like open borders, to feed his former former company's clients. And I, I've got to say too that there's several of these out there. There's one um, right before the Ukraine war that I called out. They actually blocked me, and they're called Arent Fox because they have been making money on Syria. The guy who was making the money on Syria actually knows this this guy, and um, because this guy was advocating for Obama to bomb Syria, which would have made Arent Fox a lot of money for rebuilding Syria. So these people, all these Obama retreads, Every single policy that they do where you're like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing it? They're doing it for money. They're doing it for money. Okay, there might be a greater evil out there. There might be a greater invisible, evil invisible hand guiding them. But these suckers here, they're in it for the cash. That's the only reason these kind of people get close to or into politics is for the money. Okay, it's for the money. Because it, when you have this guy's position... This guy's feet will never touch the ground. His golden parachute will be so big. Um, but I want to point out what these guys do and what they get away with a lot is they fly under the radar, okay? You know, a lot of people probably never heard of him. Honestly, I hadn't till the other day um, until I looked him up and got him on my sheet. But this guy, along with so many others, I'm, I'm really trying to flesh this out, they're all... They all work together, and they all set up NGOs so they can pay. That's how you launder the money. So that's how you can pay yourself huge salaries. Yeah, they're technically nonprofits, but the entity is a nonprofit. The people within it make plenty of profit. Um, And so, and most of them, if you go to the IRS's page about it, you can't even look up, like, you get as far as, like, their 2019 tax returns, and no one's enforcing it. So, um let me see. There was one that, yeah, oh yeah, right. 10 partnerships. So sorry guys. I went back to back from this, from the last show to another one. Okay. Now here we go. Let me get back to, yeah, get back to, um, yeah, the 10 partnership. Come on. Where'd it go? Okay. Here we go. So the 10 partnership with the, um, I'm just going to call it up. I'm sorry. Um, so embarrassing. Okay, tent partnership. Actually, it's not. I just want to make sure I'm using your guys' time wisely. You took the time to tune in. Um, for, yeah. Okay, so this is the one. Wait till I call this. It's going to blow your mind. If you've never heard of the tent partnership, I, this is really something. Okay. Tent partnership. And you see, they're always pulling at the hard strings. So what is the tent partnership? A and a new approach to supporting refugees. Companies have had critical role to play in helping refugees. Why? Why do they have a critical role? Anyways, who have been forced to flee from their home countries. Maybe that's true, probably because some of the words that we helped initiate um, integrate into their new communities, their new communities. No, our communities. We focus on mobilizing leading business uh, to connect with refugees through training, hiring, and mentorship, because we know that securing a job is a critical milestone for a refugee building a new life. Hey, how about for Americans? The, mm, sorry, I got to censor myself because I'm, I'm, I'm on a different platform. So um, here's what we're looking at. Uh, companies, okay, we already read that. Okay, so harnessing employers do best to overcome refugees' pervasive exclusion from the workforce. Here are, this is the global network, okay? These are the people in the Temp Partnership, okay? Adidas, Amazon, Chobani, this guy kind of leads the Temp Partnership, CEO of Chobani. Um, I don't know what BBVA is, I'll have to look it up. FedEx, H&M Group, L'Oreal, you notice Blinken mentioned, it was a Kmart or whatever, Pfizer, Now, I often wonder what happened to so many of these unaccompanied children. I know a lot of them seems like they got sold into sex trafficking, which is all this horrible. But I do wonder often how these drugs are tested and found to be safe for for children. 
just something to think about. Starbucks, of course, they're in there. Um, TD Bank, Virgin, Coca-Cola, Ransat, Sedexo, of course, Google, Gap, CVS also had the contract for the vaccines. Airbnb. Now, this one's interesting. <laughs> this one's really interesting. Let me tell you why. You <laughs> So do you guys recall the um, Venezuelan guy, he's an illegal, who was shouting about, like, um, squatting? It was during the whole squatting thing, which is still going on, by the way. Well, he was saying that most of that squatting, they use Airbnb to spot the houses. So they look for these houses, these squatters, they look for houses on Airbnb. And they get a long-term rental and then they don't leave and so many of the laws let them stay because they protect tenants over landlords what does that do that drives individual tenants out of business uh, landlords out of business making your property right for the picking for things like blackrock and it's happening all over look around your neighborhoods so it's interesting that they had um you know uh, airbnb's part of the tent partnership and let me get into the temp partnership temp partnership is going to be a big focus of the Kamala Harris investigation um so I will make sure it's just tent.org for everyone and start digging into this start making the connections I will give you credit I don't take credit for anyone else's work just make sure it's well sourced okay our members resources okay we already got that that's the coalition now all commitment types oh yeah lots of <laughs> lots of pharmaceuticals here lots of them um all of your food there's your food security travel now we all know we've all been on the planes full of illegals um there's your food security food security um there's your american express i mean this is the first time I'm seeing this tab. I'm actually shocked to see how many companies, AT&T, there's those free phones for you, and there's another company that does those too. So this is pretty much, like these companies are all part of the tent partnership. The tent partnership is all about bringing more illegals in, not less. These are the people that try to get the um, visas extended, um, these are the people that they want. These are the people cheering on the illegal invasion of our country. Okay. I mean, I'm only at sea. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but these are all the companies in the tent partnership, in the tent partnership. They've all donated money. They built tons of money. Ernst and Young, of course. Um, so what I recommend if you're in the audience and you want to get involved in helping me out here start making these connections like you know pick a company i always with an investigation pick pick a small target and work out from it don't pick a big target like if you pick bill gates yeah you're, you're gonna find a lot of stuff but it's gonna be actionable it's gonna lead you in a million directions but if you pick something no one's ever heard of that's interesting because it will lead you to things you weren't paying attention to like or we weren't paying attention to. Like for instance, Gannett. I remember growing up with Gannett. That was a major news wire. As part of the USA, you see they've merged with USA Today Network. Now, if you look at all your local papers, check out your local papers. Look how many are part of the USA Today Network. Why is that important? Because that's how you get your spin. That's how they're spinning for Kamala. Okay. It scares the hell out of me that there's so many energy companies on there. Google, uh, again, we talked about them, but so many food companies, so many food companies, so many pharmaceutical companies. What? Of course. Um, anyways, the list goes on. Every hotel that's been so generous, they're all on this tent. Now, remember what the White House thing said, they're kind of matching what these companies put into that uh, initiative all that money goes to the tent partnership and it's the tent partnership that sends up, sets up all of these uh illegal alien facilities um on the border they're the ones that get the money to the ngos it is the tent partnership now what is the tent partnership uh well, let me show you okay so here we go about our work where we work okay there's where they work but Let's just go into about our work. And just so you know, the founder is the the CEO of, of Chobani um, Yogurt. 
Okay, so hiring, training, and mentoring. Um, there's some of the mentoring they do. Okay, there, we've already looked at their partners. Um, and again, they have the guidebooks on how to treat illegals, research for companies. They get to pick them. So really what they've done is they've set up an international labor trade market through the temp partnership. There's also brokers, labor brokers, that have been, um, they kind of act like mobileindeed.com, so you get companies in America and all around the world cheap labor. Now, I will get into what we were talking about earlier with the um, the abuse of the wages, but I was reading a well-sourced article today, I don't have it in front of me, that basically said that there's... God, I got to find it because it is really good. Um, basically, it was saying this. I think I have it in a folder. Yeah, I got to read this. This is shocking that even though these companies get fined for using people without work visas, the amount they save in um, wages far outweighs all of that. So, yeah, good. I found it. Excellent. Okay, yeah, let me... Um, let me read this to you. I'll put it on the screen too. So this all ties together. Guys, I'll be a little better prepared next time. I do apologize. I did want to um, get on today, so I didn't really do a lot of preparation. I went right from one to the other, um, and I had that power outage. But you know, it's been since Monday since I've been on, and I wanted to get you guys engaged with what I'm looking at. So when we meet again, you can see um, we can see what you found. And please, 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 uh, send those leads. I'll tie them together. And if anyone wants to help me, please reach out to me. Okay. I could always use the help uh, putting these things together, collecting them, sourcing things, writing. Um, I don't get paid for this show except for by our sponsors uh, through affiliate programs. Um, okay. So here we go. Oh yeah. Went down. There we go. All right. Okay, and I do have a nice whopper for you at the end of this week. Yeah, found it. Sorry, you got to hunt through the screens here on one screen to see which one you're going to share. Okay, negative population growth. Okay, April 25th, 2024. This is from uh, Educating America, uh, Craig Lewis, and um, I guess negative population growth is the name of the organization in third installment. So they're talking about the hospitality industry. Author exposes stark numbers within the hotel industry workforce with a bold statement early in the paper. Immigrants make up 31%. Remember, they say immigrants, I say illegal aliens, because that's what the court calls them. Whatever. Immigrants make up 31% of the industry's workforce, although they make up just over 13% of the U.S. population. Um, that's actually more accurate than people have been saying. Rubenstein writes, offering a nuanced perspective on the employment dynamics within this crucial sector. With nearly 15 million Americans employed in tourism and hospitality, this text invites in a crit. Okay. He talks about the H-2B visas. Um, he engages people in myth versus fact. Okay, so on to the paper. Okay, so what he gets into is he, like he can't make this stuff up. Um, he is, ah. yep. So basically, what he's talking about in that paper, I'll post the paper. I'll let you guys read it. But he's talking about how, like, no one follows the rules. It's all about pushing the, you know, the uh, the cheap labor. It's all about cheap labor. That's the thing. Uh, for at this level. Above that, I think there's people above all of this who have darker intentions for the U.S. besides just cheap labor, um, but we won't go into that now. So, unfortunately, I don't have the document in front of me. I won't keep you waiting for that, but I did read it. It's very good. I will post it. But essentially what he's saying is, like, they're, they're playing the game. Like, they know they're not going to get in trouble if they're hiring illegals, so they hire them. Now, According to this paper, people are paying the illegal aliens like a third of what people are getting for minimum wage. And then they're pocketing the rest. And a lot of these companies get subsidized 
to hire illegals, which you'll see in the temp partnership. All right, guys, it's late. Um, this show started a little later than I wanted to. I am going to throw the chat up here and uh, just take a few of these, kind of let that roll live so you're not at my mercy. I'll put it up here in a second if I can find it. Okay, share screen. Okay, where where is my chat? Where's my chat? Um, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Yeah, I found it, okay, chat. Okay, so this is the Rumble chat. Oh, you guys on Twitter got lucky. I did not kill it. Uh, that doesn't look like my chat. Um, no, that is not it. Okay, let me get it up here. I came out wrong. All right, so um, I do want to deal with the chat. Well, let me just, I'm going to have to pull it from the StreamYard app. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, Not Lowe's is on a tear. Um, uh, and don't worry because... Those few progressives will soon be voted out. Okay. Okay, Steve Allen put this one up. White House brief room statements. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and that's the DNA. Yeah, that's the DNA paper too. Um, I'm sorry. That's not the DNA paper. That's the Declaration of North America. So there's a Steve Allen put that up in the chat. I'm sure you guys got it. Okay. They say the guy was Venezuelan military intelligence, Juan Guido. Yeah, I mean, yeah, could have been. Good Lord landlords, uh, especially Airbnbs, are parasites. Who is not laws? Come on, man. Um, okay, so I'm trying to catch up with this. Okay, so she's the director of the Georgetown Institute for Women and Peace Security. She's also co-CEO of Vital Voices. Um, okay, I... All right. I'd bet BlackRock, okay, Resman Solution, State Street and Vanguard own all those. Uh, they probably own big chunks of them for sure. Um, let's see, not Lowe's, I'll give you a, but they don't want to do that because it would affect rent prices, investment properties. Can't have those trust funds loose. You know, um, yeah, I got to take a little reservation with that with not Lowe's. There's a lot of people that rent out a room. There's a lot of people that use these kind of short-term rentals to to pay their mortgage. Like, remember, they closed a lot of companies. They closed a lot of, they took away landlords' ability to collect rent. I'm a landlord, okay? And if I if someone doesn't pay me the rent they owe me and I can't evict them and they get to just squat on my house, I could lose my house. I, I could lose my yeah, I'm not a trust fund baby. I joined the military, put myself through college. Um, I came from a family of nine kids. Very, you know, my dad I think made thirty nine thousand a year. So, and he was a landlord. And that's how we. That's how a lot of people make ends meet. So don't don't assume that like landlords are trust fund babies. A lot of landlords, uh, I'd say a huge um, amount of landlords are hardworking people that manage their money well, and they depend on legitimate rent or short-term rentals to make money so they can pay their bills that keep going up. So not to get that excited about it, not laws, but you know, don't, don't just assume that people that are landlords are trust fund, but I'd say the vast majority of them are probably people like you and me who, you know, we depend on, on things like short-term rentals so we can make ends meet, especially in this economy. Um, centralization is one of their most powerful tools yes and it's a hey one independent it's very um it's very uh important because think about it if you want to conquer this country wouldn't you rather have a centralized government especially one you already own instead of 50 little ones think about it uh tph14 where do we find this list uh just go to tent.org tph4 you'll find it um and then here's another one, Steve Allen, you own development data sites. Yeah, that is a good one. I will put that actually in, into the timeline. Um, what I'm going to do is probably on the next show, instead of just giving you results, um, I'm going to put together some of the things I found, how I organize them. Um, and really, I think one of the things I want to do with this show is show you how I structure an investigation. Um, cause that's the biggest part. Like there's a lot of people collect, 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 
and that nothing's organized and you don't know what to do with it. The key thing is making it actionable, making intelligence actionable. Okay, can you, and you're like, well, the government's not going to do anything anyways. It's true. They're probably not this government, but think outside the box. As a sibilant, <laughs> think outside the box. If you want to kill Godzilla, who, who do you get? You get Megalon or whatever that thing's name is. Um, if you want to kill King Kong, you get Godzilla. So what I want to do with these papers is, yeah, I'll, I'll make them available to Congress or whoever. But if they're not going to use them legally, I'm also going to make them available to the mega corporations that are not on that list, the competitors of these guys. I'm not saying the competitors are any better, but everyone's got competitors. So why not really mess up the market and make things really, really difficult for them with really good, solid competitive intelligence? You just give it away to the competition and then you just let them kill each other. That's really a, a really good plan. Brian, the anti-federalist bravo. The anti-federalist bravo. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, you got to have a central government, but it, it was never meant to be like this. You know, actually, on that point, um, Rev's Man Solution. I saw a statistic the other day that showed that I think it's like 14 or 16% of the U.S.'s GDP comes from government jobs. It's like 14 or 16%. Whereas in China, which is an actual authoritarian communist government, 12% of the GDP comes from government jobs. We're a constitutional republic. We're supposed to be a free nation. How can we have a higher percentage of government jobs than the authoritarian communists? You know, Xi Jinping state over there. Like, you see what I mean? Like, it's just growing, growing, growing. And it's like, we're surrounded by it. And we're supposed to be preaching about democracy and everything else. Look how big our government is. It's insane. And anyone who's ever lived in New York or... or God forbid, Massachusetts, I live in both. Just filling out, just getting like getting your driver's license transferred from another state is, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I let my, my explorer go like unregistered for like a year because it just, it was just so laborious. I was like, ah, oh, hell, I'll just use, I use my wife's car because she likes when I drive anyways. And uh, thank you, Brian. Appreciate what you do. Hey, that's really cool, man. Thanks, Mans, uh, by the way. For sure what you do, I imagine this stream will replace others with my limited time. That's awesome. That's such a nice compliment. M Medal of Florine. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. And then we have Cheryl Bosch. Um, that would be helpful. I would like to learn your technique. Yes. And what I'll do, if you guys, uh, you know what I'll do is, um, if you guys, uh, tell you what, Here's my Twitter account, okay? And I I have plenty of followers. I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, click for. I'm not. That's not clickbait to get followers. Uh, it's probably just the easiest. Why don't I do this? Why don't I? Yeah, you know, put this up in the banner. So my Twitter profile, where I'm on most of the time, I do have a getter profile. I'm just not on there a lot because I like to see what what is kind of happening with everyone. Um, and that's kind of like a we're we're good at battles here. That's my that's my Twitter profile. So if you guys if you guys follow me, um, and, and mention in a DM that you followed me from the show, and I'll follow you back. Okay, um, and I will. You just gotta DM and nudge me. Um, but what I'll do is I'll do a a poll. Okay, to say, you know, when would the best time be for you to do a learning technique thing, like um, Cheryl was saying. It was the best time of the day for you because. You know, it's nighttime. A lot of people are sleepy. They're not going to retain a lot. Um, is it morning, weekends? I could do a weekend show as well. If you guys want to do a weekend, that might be a good idea. Maybe do a Sunday show. Can't do it this weekend because we have a, a thing. But um, I could do, yeah, I could do a few weekends as well. So let me know what works best for you. I would say for something like that, you could you might, might want to block about an hour, hour and a half. But yeah, I'll take you right from the very first step to what to investigate, why to investigate it, and how to set up your investigation, what those steps are. 
for now while you're investigating this, and I hope you are, just start at the tent partnership, okay? Tent partnership, um, just go to tent.org and just start pulling down pages, okay? Start archiving them. If you don't know how to, I'll cover that, uh, write that down. But just start collecting. A good way to archive pages, a really good way that's guaranteed is just right clip, print them as PDFs. That's what I do with every page I look at because pages change even on the archives. So right click or control click or command click, I think if you have a Mac and then print to PDF and then start a file, a folder. Also, I'll say this, as you start collecting, one of my biggest weaknesses is organization with my collection. Um, way better now, but make sure you take the time to set up a folder and don't make it cryptic. Just make your folder like, you know, descriptive, like, uh, these are the a-holes from this industry doing this. And that's your folder. That, that helps a lot of people. It doesn't have to look official and all Tom Clancy. So start there, but collect, collect, collect. Um, and again, you know, share with me if you want. Um, if you, all I ask for is this, try to get to those primary sources. Okay. I mean, newspaper articles and stuff are are interesting and they're they're good leads but they're not really they're like secondary tertiary sources you, they're not the best uh definitely not wikipedia is not a source but if you go to wikipedia you go down to their citations that's where you get somewhere another part of wikipedia and i don't want to go on a tangent but it's really interesting check the check the changes to the entry in wikipedia and then compare those to current events that's really interesting. And if someone wants it, um, by all means, track the changes, the historical changes made to Kamala Harris's Wikipedia page. Um, and someone might even want to, this would be interesting, someone might even want to go to Wikipedia and check the history changes for Donald Trump up till uh, on the day of and after the assassination attempt. That could be quite revealing. I'd get on that quick because I just said it, and it, things might start disappearing. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I have family in town. I wanted to take this time. Sorry to keep you waiting all week. I will put out a schedule. I will stick to a regular schedule, um, but we're getting there. There's just so much going on. I'm so glad that all of you came here tonight. Uh, you guys are awesome. And just um, you can also shoot me an email and um, – you know, shoot me an email and, you know, let me know what times work for you the best. I, I'm not going to accommodate everyone. I'm going to do an average, you know, so if I get an average of this time frame, that's going to be the time frame, um, you know, so don't don't get mad. Uh, thanks, Brian. Well, so many nice comments. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, that'd be awesome. Okay, great. Uh, this is Halle Berrios. Thank you, Brian, for all the work you do. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for showing up, Hall Halle Berry US. Um, TP, that'd be awesome. I look up, I'll look up the org. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Tent.org. Um, thanks, Brian. I also appreciate your willingness to help us out and especially everything you bring to the table. Yeah, no, by all means. And, you know, um, help me out by going to my sub stack. You don't have to do a paid subscription if you don't want to, but share it with people. Um, what I will be doing is I will be taking these big white papers. I'll be doing um, like a summarized investigation for mass consumption because 650 words is, is good for like more people to read it. Um, and then I'm going to be doing deeper white papers that I'm certainly going to um, – I'm going to try to actually get those to the competitors and anyone who I cite, anyone who provided assistance on those investigations, I'll work out a, a profit share with you. If I sell any of them, I'm not really looking to sell them though. I, I'd give them to the competitors if that means they're going to cause damage to the other evil people. Um, yeah. Uh, TP for, I know wiki is free uh, rain changes. Well, it's interesting. You should look up something called, um, I think they're called edit wars on Wikipedia where, so anyone could go in there and edit on Wikipedia. Um, but I guess I should share my screen now. I do actually like, this is, by the way, thanks for coming everyone. This is actually, I really enjoy this because as you, a lot of you know, when you're researching all day long, you just get so much in your head and this really, 
you know, you guys are all interlocutors, okay, and get to bounce these ideas. And sometimes people say, well, that doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do is, let me see here. Um, okay, so I'm calling up Donald Trump. Let me share the screen. Okay. All right, so this is Donald Trump's Wikipedia page. Okay, you see it there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop that. I'm going to share the whole web page because if you, if I only share the tab, then um, when I change tabs, it doesn't like show you everything. All right, here we go. Make it a separate window. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting better at this. All right. All right, so here is his Wikipedia page, okay? And I think I have this about as big as I can get. Okay, so what you want to do in this, this is really interesting. I learned this because my wife, Naomi Wolf, was getting attacked all the time, long before the pandemic. And I could always track a lot by going into the changes. So here you got Donald Trump's uh, Wikipedia page. Now go into View History. Okay, and this is where you find all of those edits. Okay, so I don't want to steal anyone's thunder. I know people are going to want to dive into it. Now, there's also clearly some government organizations on this because there was one guy, I forgot his name. He was always editing, like changing like my wife's profile and stuff like that. Um, and I, I did the count. Like you'll, these are their usernames like, yeah, I mean, like some of these people supposedly work 24-7. Like no one's on Wikipedia editing that much. So that is the, just so you know, view history. Okay, that's the most important part. And you can actually connect the volume of changes to the date. And then what I recommend, if you see a huge volume of changes on a certain date, like 25-25, uh, like a lot on 25th July. Okay, I'm sure there's a lot for him anyways, but... Maybe even someone who's really good with like spreadsheets and, and charts and everything can get some metrics here. And so we can see the pattern. And then we compare that pattern of changes to what was happening in the world that day. And then we start looking at, okay, who benefits from changing this man's profile or what was happening where they'd want to make the profile the way it was. Also, you're looking for what kind of changes were made. So for instance, like, on Naomi's profile, for the longest time, they would hide the fact that she was ever been married and is currently married. I'd put it up, someone would take it down. Um, they would also omit a lot of things. And so what happens, editors go in and omit things or add things. And if someone doesn't go in there and change them, then they stay. And there's so many morons out there that think Wikipedia is actually a real source that they just go with it. But this here is a crappy source, but where it is a good source is what's happening, like who's controlling it and how they're controlling it. And you can really, really spot a lot of predictive intelligence from Wikipedia. You know, I would say kind of link up with each other and say, hey, I'm going to cover these three people from the tent partnership. You cover these, you cover these, you cover these. Let's, let's collaborate. We have a tool on Daily Cloud. I think I could... I'm going to ask for a free one and invite you all in and let's collaborate. Okay. We're, and you know, and let's keep our target focus on tent.org for now for this one. Okay. I will bring up, I'll probably do some like shorts during the week where I go over the news and kind of point out some things that are really bothering me. Like these new, uh, like these new groups that pop up on, on X that are like Haley, Haley voters, Haley voters for Harris. I'm like, what, three of them? <laughs> you know, and so, but those are all organizations. They're all like, they're all set up. And I did notice the Haley voters for Harris. The Twitter page was set up three months ago, but she wasn't running for anything three months ago. So just, you know, attention to detail there. So Wikipedia, again, don't look at the content as always the best source, but for Wikipedia, none of this matters. Okay, none of this matters. None of this matters. Okay, none of the none of the content matters. It's a good, you know, it's a good way to get an overview of something. What matters is what I just showed you, the history and the citations. Okay. Pick your citations wisely, but this kind of will save you a lot of time 
Googling. And uh, I use Wikipedia really just get an overview of like something I don't know. Like if someone asks me to investigate this thing, I'll look for Wikipedia, see what the summary is, and then I bounce. Um, but then I'll always, always check the view history. And you'll start seeing a lot of these same people uh, or IP addresses all over the place. And you can, you know, just got to collect a lot, but you'll start seeing a pattern. We'll show you how to make those patterns. Okay, so the other thing you want to do is um, you want to get an X profile. You know, I know not everyone likes X or Twitter, but I will say this. X is another great source, not because of the content. I mean, there's some good content on there, right? I mean, I, I like X. You know, it's it's a little addictive. I try not to do too much on it. But there are, <laughs> Jesus, there are um, really good things on X that I can show you. So, for instance, you could, finding out who started a hashtag, for instance, what the hell is going on at the Olympics, by the way? Um, so, finding out who started a hashtag, that can tell you a lot. Um, finding out who, for instance, is running propaganda, like pro-Palestinian propaganda. Let me show you what I mean. Um, there's this one, there's this one person, and hey, that's us. There is this one person um, I've been tracking for a while and I will share that with you. And I'm not going to say anything right now because, um, well, I, I just, I, I, I want you to see what I see without me telling you. So the spaces here are um, also good, but what I, okay, so let me get to the point. All right, so if you guys don't follow, just track, but where is she? Yeah, okay. Okay. There's a lot going on there. Okay, there's a lot going on there. A lot going on there. Okay. But I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything bad. Um, I don't know why she follows me. Who knows? But the thing is, if you um, check out those type of profiles, okay, you will see them across multiple geopolitical issues. I've watched her go from uh, Ruth sent us the anti, uh, you know, the Roe v. Wade decision. I've seen her go from that to Ukraine, to Palestine, to Kamala, you name it. They're bouncing all over the place. And then you'll start seeing, and this is why I think Twitter is important. Then here's another one. This one's just a trip. Okay, and they, so these, yeah, just you mark them. To, I, I want to follow them. Don't give them the followers. But what I am saying is, so this guy here, he runs these spaces on Google. And he just, what they do, is, what they do is you go on the space and, you know, they call it like vaccine conversation, you know, all welcome. And then they start yelling at people who are like, well, I don't want to take the vaccine. Like what? You know, and they start yelling at them. Funny story is I went, I went on one. <laughs> by accident i went onto the wrong space and it was his space and they got like all hushy and they're like oh well brian o'shea naomi will's husband's on the space and i'd actually fallen asleep and i kind of heard this and they're like well i invited him to speak but <laughs> i was like what the hell's going on here then another one same people their friends i went onto the space and they started shouting at me um anyways but that's that's good, right? Because that's showing you, okay, they don't want me there. These people are all Pointer Institute, Pointer Institute, which is like the fact check people and all that. They try not to be, but they are. It's you can look it up. Um, this is what they do. So this is like disruptive influence. They'll enter spaces. They'll yell at people that disrupt them, and that's where I found other sources of intel. Is the patterns of of interaction will give you a lot. Like, why are these people yelling at these people? Why are they infiltrating this space and causing all sorts of trouble? That can tell you a lot. And then another thing that can tell you a lot, too, is who blocks you? You know, that's a big one. Um, like, for instance, you know, if you know who Peter Dashik is, you know, when they block you, I always pay attention when I get blocked, okay, by someone kind of significant he is the um 
he is the uh, CEO of the Eco Health Alliance. And I am going to wrap this up because now I'm just rambling. Okay, so Peter Dajak. Oh, so I, I have another file on him. Why he blocked me, when he blocked me. Very interesting. He blocks a lot of people. But his opera singer brother blocked me too. I'm very proud of my blocks. Okay, but when people block you, you keep track of what you said, when you said it, why they blocked you, and um, mark that tweet. Okay, mark that tweet. So that's it. I'm not going to go into just make sure you learn how to search Twitter. I really do recommend getting an account on there. Just it's a great way to track people, keep tabs on people, um, and but really keep tabs on messaging. Okay, messaging is important. Okay. This is how you track messaging is Twitter is the town hall, uh, not so much Facebook. I don't really do much there, but Twitter is the town hall and we'll get into Google trends. And again, these are all manipulated. I'm not saying they're the content is that accurate. What I am saying is look for the pattern of how they're used. Look for the pattern of how they're used. And then you start seeing, then you find your own content through primary sources and then you start filling in the blanks. Like, that's how you get to predictive intelligence. That's how you can say what's over the horizon. Lots of research is good, but if it already happened, it's history. Can you act on it? And as my commanders in special forces used to say, if you brought intel, it better be critical to that mission. Otherwise, you got the who cares. And if you can't answer who cares or so what, well, you're in a lot of trouble. So that's my, my goal is to get actionable intelligence. And I will need your help with getting um, a nice list identified of who to get this to. Not just Congress people, competitors, lawyers, lawyers that actually fight like Mike Davis. Um, but getting, you know, the list like, and get creative, get creative, okay? I was a private detective for a while. I started my own business. It was amazingly lucrative. I did really well on stalker cases. You want to know why? Because I've never been a cop. And no offense to cops. I love, you know, I got a lot of friends that are cops, you know, but uh, I'd never been a cop. So problem with stalker cases, that's how I met my, my wife. I actually, she had death threats in a stalker case. But their stalkers will stalk people because they know how to stay outside of the, you know, perimeters that set up on them, the... Uh, uh, restraining order and all that. So I, I learned to get creative to stop stalkers. Okay. And what I do is I start stalking them. And, you know, a lot of people who, you know, were, you know, taught to be police and they have to follow strict rules because those poor men and women are always getting in trouble for following the rules half the time. But see, I was never in that world. I came from a different world where creativity, sometimes dark creativity, came up with really good solutions to solve a problem. And like I always tell my wife, she'll ask me, she's like, is that legal? And I always say, well, it's not illegal. So on that note, um, let me let you guys go. Uh, don't forget, let me put up my, mm -mm. let me put up my, uh, put up my email. Um, everyone's saying have a good night. You guys have a good night too. Uh, Brian loves the letter S. Did I type a bunch of S's? That's embarrassing. Um, okay, Cheryl Bosch, go enjoy your family. Yes, I do need to. Okay, great, great information. Wake up really early PT. I need to wake up early to do my PT too. I built a whole gym here. It's coming together. I like the kettlebells, like the kettlebells. Okay, Pacific time, gotcha. Oh, you're lucky. That's nice. Um, and then I'm also specific time. Okay, that's good to know, guys. I'll meet you in the middle here somewhere. I can <laughs> Okay, I can poop. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, shoot me a line, uh, Brian at Daily Cloud. Um, if your word ability is true, then, you know, that's that's big. Uh, they started scrubbing Kamala's bad stuff off the internet. Wow, that's that's interesting. Stephen Allen, we need to keep track of it. I would recommend we do man-on coverage like in football. Don't try to cover everyone. Pick, pick a target and stay with it. Uh, so someone pick Kamala. You know, everyone, this is all about her members of her staff pick the transition team and become the expert on that person or that narrow target that's and then we can bring these things together then you have a really powerful piece of actionable intelligence um let me see it was her lol 
uh, this is my cousin Ernie. He's actually my cousin. Uh, only use Brave Browser for most stuff. Okay, that's uh, good. Actually, Ernie, do me a favor, shoot me. I don't know what Brave Browser is, so if you could shoot me a, a link on the email, I'll uh, put that out. Um, I'm going to have like a sh uh, open folder. Right, Ernie, it's my default. Well, that's good, Stephen Allen. Said. Stephen Allen, you've been on a space with me as well. We got to do another space soon, too. Um, I saw an evangelist errors. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I cover everyone. Emojis, set it all. Um, uh, have you done any investigations specifically with bots and bot farms? Not really. What I'd recommend, though, Haley Berry, is I would um, I would recommend going to Joe Bot. Let's see if I can find him. But Joe Allen, he is uh, Steve Bannon's and the War Room's uh, chief um, AI editor. He does all the AI contact. Joe Allen, I would go to his um, Twitter. It's while well, I have my screen up, I will just type him in. He's a great guy. Uh, he's a friend, but he's excellent. Um, he'd be the guy to ask. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, follow Joe Allen. Okay, he's he's awesome, and um, we have many a beer together with. Uh, uh, Tucker Carlson's biographer Chadwick Moore. We all had and Drew Allen, a uh, guy on Daily Cloud. So, uh, anyways, uh, and get his book, Dark Eon. He, Joe Allen's amazing. He's amazing. You you can't go wrong. The Singularity Weekly on Substack. He's he's a great dude, and he knows his stuff. And he's it's an interesting background because he's focused on AI, but he also has a theology degree, and he went to the same school I went to I, for criminology and criminal justice. So really cool um that's a that's definitely a recommended follow um and then that's it uh so peter has 666 tattoo on his head all right um fair enough okay i'm just kind of cruising through these i guess amazon has been scrubbing books on camilla uh okay so cheryl says amazon's been scrubbing books on camilla that the power is that shouldn't be make a list if you would and share it please cheryl um and i'll make a I gotta find a way to make it. I'll find a place where we can get all this stuff out there really quickly. But yeah, please, when you say those kind of things, make a list so we can look into it. Who's scrubbing them? Who was the target market? Who's the publisher? Who's the editor? Who'd she thank in the beginning of the book? Those kind of things all matter. Everything matters. Okay, when you're you collect, and then we'll triage, and we'll go through that when we do a class. Okay, there is perception and reality. However, there is a narrative, a perceived whole, accepted perception. There's also the creation of reality. Nah, I'll show you the pet another time. Um, but ask me about we create reality sometime. There's a story there in the background. Uh, have a great evening, everyone. All right, bye, Cheryl. You know, I, something like X will put forwards a whole perceived perception. Don't get stuck in the weeds. Well, like I said, not those. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. But you're not looking at the content. Don't look at the content. Look at the pattern. Look at who's who's setting up who, how many times people are setting up spaces, those audio things. It's a good way to figure out who's on what team. Great way to figure out who's on what team. And seeing, you know, get really like who they follow first, who are they connected with, that sort of thing. Doesn't mean they're connected, but, you know, if, someone has, if someone's only following like 30 people and they have 30,000 followers, that's significant to see who they're following and if those people follow them back. Um, but I agree with you. Don't get stuck in the weeds. Many, too many times, uh, I've spent too much time on Twitter responding. And I've, I've gotten better where it's kind of like, you know, when you were younger or, or maybe last week, or you'd call your, your, your girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or something, you know, and they used to call it drunk dialing. Well, I think there's drunk tweeting because some of these tweets that come out, they should have saved those to drafts. And one thing I do is like, if it's too late and I'm feeling, I, I, you know, I, I get triggered, which I try not to do, but we all do. I, I will save it to a draft. <laughs> you know, and if it's a good idea to tweet that in the morning, then I'll tweet it in the morning. But I think drunk, drunk tweeting is a thing. It must be. Um, I just received his book. Okay. Thank you, Halle Berry. Of course. Of course. Definitely. Um, and I'll try to do as many, and I'll try to get it on a regular schedule, too, so I don't lose my mind. Okay, sounds good. I'll look into it. Thank you, Cheryl. She heard me. That's cool. Um, I like your methods. 
I like yours, not Lowe's. I, you're gonna have to tell me how to pronounce your name, but yeah, that's well, that's these are trained methods. I do, do want to point out, like, I, I'm not a, like I didn't just kind of figure these. I I was in the intelligence world for a long time, um, and there was training. My training was really quickly. I'll tell you my 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 final test. So I went to Arabic school for two years in Monterey. Went right out of basic training, right out of high school. Before that, then two years of Arabic. Life was good. Then I had to go to actual training, and I started in uh, electronic warfare and cryptology. Um, my final test after six months was a stack of traffic this big, intercepted enemy traffic. I can't say whose. You can probably guess this is in early 90s. Um, about that much traffic. You had to go through it, sort it, break it down, crack the codes, pencil, um, and basically figure it all out from the pattern of it breaking the codes using all these different methods that they taught you, but also what type of unit was by the shape of the communications. And then there were 20 questions you had to answer, 20 questions. Where's the enemy located? Where will they be located? All this. That was like a two-day test, and uh, you had to get every question. And so that really drives it into your brain. Like you, you apply that pattern to everything you see. Like, it, it's kind of annoying, I think, to some people where like, I'm like, yeah, but what's I really mean? But then I keep going. That's probably why I have sleep issues. But, you know, you, if you look at life and patterns, it, life tends not to surprise you as much in a negative way. So anyways, I digress. All right. So yeah, that was the test. And he says, damn. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, I, like one of them is like, you know, where's this artillery unit going to be on the map on Tuesday? You know, and you're like, Oof. and there, there was that, there's always that one question. It could be this or this, and you just can't be sure. So, yeah, it's very painful, Cheryl, very painful. Um, but, you know, I got through it because I paid attention, and, you know, it was, it was good. And then after that, I went to Fort Huachuca for another two months of training, got to fly drones when they were first coming out, those big, loud propeller ones. And then um, off to 101st Airborne. I was there for about a year, and then um, I got an invitation to come over to 5th Special Forces, which I loved, absolutely loved it, Middle East, North Africa, Special Forces group. Um, and it's just, it was a lot more relaxing. You got a lot, got to shoot all the time and train all the time. Then I went to a strategic unit uh, in Fort Gordon for about two years, which was not bad. I, I wanted to learn all these different levels of intel. Then I went to first Special Forces, which is Southeast Asia. Um, and that was really one of the best units ever. And then I got out to government intelligence agencies as a contractor. And then when I got out of that, I actually found competitive intelligence because it was the only thing I could figure out that I wouldn't need a clearance for because I was kind of sick of being stuck in DC. Anyways, that's my biography. You can read that on my Substack. Um, it's just Brian O'Shea at Sub, um, on Substack. Investigate everything, but yeah, check it out and bring your questions and you know bring your targets. You know, go through. We are looking at tent.org. We are looking at tent.org. Okay, remember that. Um, and their affiliations with Kamala Harris, and also um, we. And um, by the way, most important thing. Um, forgot to say this uh goggle google okay sorry guys it's so weird to type on the screen so camilla harris you're gonna love this and tent partnership yeah Tent Partnership for Refugees, if there's any question if she's affiliated or not, well, this is during her Guatemala trip. What? Wait, 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 who's that? Oh, look, that's Kamala Harris at the Tent Partnership. When you guys look in a tent, it's going to blow your mind. I'll just put it that way. So uh, tent.org, tent.org, they are responsible for so much of everything that's wrong with this illegal invasion that JJ Carroll and I cover. Make sure you tune into Unrestricted Invasion. And guys, I am going to bounce because I could talk all night. It's the Irish in me. But make sure you also go to dailyclout.io. Oh, and we have sponsors too. Um, 
I actually use all these products. I'll just say it. This is Native Path. Okay, I put this in my shakes. My kid used to make fun of me. He said, "Dad, your hair is thinning," and uh, he was right. I was like, "Man, it's my hair thinning." And look, I don't know if it was these collagen peptides from Native Path, but I will say this: I caught a look at my um, scalp the other day at the grocery store, and it looked really thick. And I was like, "Oh, oh, well." That's good. So I got a haircut, trying to mimic what my hair looked like when he said I was going bald. And same thing. It's I, I swear to God, I don't know if it's that or the, I also take these bison organs from Naked uh, Holistic Goddess. They're called Naked Organs. These are bison uh, organs. It's like heart, liver, kidney. Okay. And well, with Native Path, let me stick with them. So Native Path, uh, let's go there. And I'm going to pop this up on the screen. These things are really good. And here's my thing with, with all these like supplements and everything. I really don't want to rely on the hospital for everything. I really don't. Um, I'm not a crazy person that will avoid the hospital. I will say this. So I had to go to the hospital recently. Um, a disabled veteran. I couldn't get there in time. I was having like a, not a panic attack, but like, man, it just felt really weird. And I didn't feel great. And, I, you know, could have been panicked. I didn't feel panicked, but anyways, I had to go to an ER and they looked me over and it wasn't that intrusive. And, um, yeah, man, like 1600 bucks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, come on. And what I find is the more water I drink and the more supplements, like, uh, get nativepath.com forward slash daily cloud. I feel better. I have tons of energy. It's great. The other thing I want to show you is my favorite coffee, 1775 coffee. You cannot go wrong. Um, what's nice about 1775, it's nice big 16 ounce, um, 16 ounce bags. And I actually do their subscription. I'm looking for the banner over here. Um, I actually do their subscription for 1775 coffee because I love the fact that like when I come home, I have a ton of coffee waiting for me and I'm never out of coffee. Um, you want to use promo code for that one, 1775 coffee, promo code unrestricted, okay, and you're going to get a lot off. They also have limitless. These are these mushroom, like Joe Rogan takes a lot of these mushroom pills. That's where I first heard about them, lion's mane, all this. If you don't have time for coffee, I always grab these, throw them in my car, and they wake you right up. It's cognitive, limitless, like the movie you really do feel smarter. So just go to 1775coffee.com and um, 1775coffee.com. Use promo code unrestricted and you will get 10 to 15% off depending on what you buy. And the final one. Okay, this is going to be a little gross. All right. So my dog got cut the other day, uh, went into the garage and... I don't know what the hell he got into, but his like whole, well, this is um, quite some time ago now, but um, he, uh, he, his old little paw was bleeding. So I think I had my emergency kit. Now this emergency kit is not really the first aid kit. So, but I had put some extra stuff in there and I got him patched up. We got him to the hospital. He's fine now. So this is more for like humans, but What's really nice about this is while I was patching him up and while I was getting him out of the woods, because he's, he's a puppy, they do stupid things, I look and there was just this massive tick just sank right into me. I'm like, oh man, Lyme disease. Well, they actually have like doxycycline in these. So I keep my wellness kit with me everywhere, wellness company. And, um, you know, again, use unrestricted as your promo code. You get a good discount. It's like, 10 15 percent off depends on the product um but check them all out and my final one and then i'll let you go heaven's harvest guys i'd never heard of this company and i've got to say <laughs> they sent me they were nice enough to send me a bucket of these as a freeze dry it's a protein kit it was like freeze dried beef crumble chicken powdered eggs didn't sound that appetizing man especially that beef crumble and that chicken. I don't know what it is, but that is, you'll sit around and eat a whole bag of it. Um, I've got a promo video. I'll pop it up tomorrow that I made with my son, but my son's 13. He's in football. Kids always hungry. 
I started realizing the beef crumble was disappearing. This kid was mowing that stuff down and I caught him and it was really funny, but it's like, there's like six burgers worth of like protein in there and they're really good. And it's nice. I keep one in the car, but that is heaven's harvest. Use promo code unrestricted at checkout. You're going to get five to 10% off. But moreover, what's really cool about this site is it's a, you know, they're actually real farmers, but they have all sorts of like how to store food, like real, not like crazy prepper, scary stuff. It's more like, you know, how to store food, how to make your own garden, even in urban settings. It's a really cool company. So use uh, unrestricted at checkout. That is heavensharvest.com. And as you can see, I have all of these things, all of them. I use them. Um, I'm almost out of coffee. The the bison, when I got detained in Holland, all they had were these bison pills. I kept popping them all day. And they do make you feel like, like I don't know, it's like protein energy all day. Or And, and think about it. Like, what's in a liver? Liver is literally like nature's multivitamin. So that's what I take. And, you know, I got to say, it's just nonstop energy. I sleep better, you know. So those are all my promos. But again, I don't promote anything on any of my shows that I don't use. And all these people are kind enough to send me samples, which is a good move on them because like with 1775 Coffee, I'm hooked. I love that stuff. I love the Limitless Pills. And I love their website. Their website is freaking hilarious. Uh, that is 1775 Coffee, 1775coffee.com. Check them out and use Unrestricted. I will get a investigated or something for now use unrestricted and that's it so guys um enjoy your night i'm gonna go i need to eat and uh so remember this is our case number one. Oh, by the way we'll have a case contest anyone who's make sure you follow me on rumble okay um follow daily cloud on rumble you could go to dailycloud.io make sure you follow them and let me show you really quickly what i need you to do is so this is important because we're very competitive at daily cloud and we want you know we all want uh to have the most followers so i'm um, i'm just started so let me see here there we go let me get to the channel but if you're not a rumble user i highly recommend it Rumble is where all of the places go that got censored off YouTube. Okay, so let me just get this up. All right. Okay, so here is go to Rumble, get an account, and you have to follow me. And I'll tell you why. Because I like to brag to the other teammates like Drew and Kate and Naomi and, you know, like how things are going and getting – everyone wants more followers. We all – you know, we all support each other, of course, but so go to Rumble, okay, and it's a, uh, there's your, it's rumble.com forward slash C forward slash investigating everything, because I own investigate everything on a different Rumble channel, and I didn't want to change it, um, but yeah, go to Rumble, and then what you're going to do is go here and follow, okay, follow right there. And then you're you're in the live chat. Um, I'm not going to always have YouTube up. I'll probably get censored. I get censored all the time with them. And I'm not always going to have Twitter up. I like Twitter, but again, I can't handle all those chats. I want to consolidate the chats. And I choose to consolidate them here um, on Rumble. So make sure you go there. And, of course, check out all of Daily Cloud's um, shows. I mean, they're all really good. And uh, there's a lot going on there so i'll do a promo for that i'm not gonna do it tonight it's too late but yeah make sure you go to dailycloud.io sign up um you can find all my my links in my twitter profile and up here and then um yeah make sure you go to my Substack and get a free subscription and i will do better to put out more content um very busy but we're gonna get these things up and we'll keep running content going for these investigations i think that'd be pretty cool guys you have a wonderful night i am out and this is brian o'Shea don't hit the little like button on your way out. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, she's awesome. She's on the same. Okay, so thank you. Sorry I got rambly at the end, but um, it's been a long week. So I will uh, talk to you later, and let me just go ahead and end with a cool video if I can find one. Here we go. Well, I'll just do, I'll just do the promo video. That's fine. <music>
sorry have a good night and we will see you soon i will announce on twitter and rumble uh when the next one's going to be remember brian at dailyclot.io get me those leads follow me on rumble and i appreciate all of you all right thank you so much Thank <laughs> you.